By the way, nurses also get heartbroken, especially if maybe it's a scenario as that we really were hopeful as well for the death not to occur and it has occurred. Nurses also mourn, doctors and even the healthcare workers, we mourn. We also get saddened because we are human beings. Even if it is seen as if these are just people who are not related to us, as healthcare givers, we also get a uh, morning moments we also hit by death <laughs> discuss about life conversations. We discuss about life being a journey whereby we bring matters of faith, of hope, of resilience, motivational encouragement. We even help each other to walk through the journey because remember, life is a journey. If you are new in this channel, we want to welcome you. Remember to subscribe, hit the subscription button, turn on all notifications so that you can be able to be receiving videos immediately when we release them so that you're not late to watch them. And if you're coming back home, you've already subscribed. Thank you very much. Feel at home. And remember to continue sharing the videos in this channel so that more and more people can be able to know about karaoke moments, grow with us, be able to grow this into a big family in YouTube. Today, we are going to continue with our series on death and you're going to do episode two whereby my mind has taken me all the way now to death. Once death has occurred, what happens? When I used to work in the hospital many, many years back as a nurse, I'm reminded of when death occurs, immediately what happens. By the way, nurses also get heartbroken, especially if maybe it's a scenario as that we really were hopeful as well for the death not to occur and it has occurred, nurses also mourn, doctors and even the healthcare workers, we mourn. We also get saddened because we are human beings. Even if it is seen as if these are just people who are not related to us, as healthcare givers, we also get uh, mourning moments. We also hit by death. So I remember, I'm still going to give an example of when I was a student because I think with practice, Someone also builds uh, the capacity of being able to look at death from a different perspective. So I remember when I was a student is when death would hit me more because they would occur and uh, you are still trying to understand death. And I went to college when I was younger. I was like, uh, I think 20 when I went into college or 21. So you're still trying to understand what death is. So what I know is when you get into the training, I don't know how about other countries, but in my country where I trained and where I lived, that is Kenya, you are given like a mentor student, a student who is senior to you so that you work with them. When you go into the world, you are looking up unto them before you go to the staff. So I remember where death occurs, one of the things was you're told, oh, get a, a, a label, you know, and you put some few uh, details on that. Uh, paper or label and you're able to see a uh, date of birth of that person so you can imagine even a newborn who is being born on that day and dying that becomes their date of birth and becomes their date of death you know so at times you are even you you write date of arrival maybe when did they come to the hospital if maybe they've been in the hospital then you put their name of course actually full name you at times put their admission number for that hospital to be more specific. You need maybe at times to put more details because also every hospital had its own ways of doing registration and doing the exit if they die. Meaning, notif personal identification is very important. And this has dropped in my heart to remember how comes we never used to write two names? It had to be one. So death is personalized. You were born alone even when you're twins you will die alone. That is why you see even sometimes twins are born too, with a difference of maybe five minutes or just a few minutes in between. But death can take one and one remains. Or even they grow together, but most probably they will not die at the same time. So death is personalized. Just as those details, it, it crops in my mind that every person, we used to write their name, 
we take them and prepare them as a personal. Even when we had some outbreaks sometimes of diseases and you have like five people dying in the ward, you are still going to write each person with their time of death and their name and how they are dying. Then you get uh, maybe, because we were also mandated to, we say packing, you know, giving their last moment, last office care. So you clean them, you put them ready. Maybe you are able to prepare in details because not everyone is a nurse. Um, I wouldn't want to go very graphical, but you prepare them the very last minute so that they are comfortable in their death. Imagine you clean them, you dress them properly, you put them on the trolley, you escort them to the mortuary. And remember, some hospitals are private to know that it's different. Maybe you call a different unit to go and help. But where I trained, we were doing that. And then we take them to the mortuary. Then a moment. Have you subscribed? Remember to subscribe. Continue liking this video. Invite more people by sharing this video so that people can be able to join us and subscribe and be able to walk with us. So back to our story. When you take them to the mortuary, you are to find other bodies in the uh, cold rooms, you know, like frozen chambers whereby you preserve the bodies, okay? And at that time, because as a student also, you need to learn what happens. There'll be someone maybe in that mortuary who will be able to help you, who will be able to pack the bodies and help you see what happens in that room. They will be able to be given preservative injections, maybe of some medication, Again, this is a detailed area, but this is what happens. And you will see the details in that room as well. Everybody will be packed with identifications very clear so that when someone is coming to identify their body, maybe a relative or they need to identify the bodies, there'll be all the names. And actually these names we live in if they'll have a title. If someone was a pastor, it will be pastor so-and-so. If someone was an engineer, it will be engineer so and so. Even in death, we are recognizing their title. If it was a doctor, it will be doctor so and so. What am I saying? It means their titles are following them to their deathbed. But you know what? These titles at that time, they are as silent as them. They are as quiet as them. Even a pilot so and so, at that point, they don't even have breath to fly the planes. Even as a lawyer, you are just lawyer so-and-so in your deathbed, but you cannot go to a courtroom. You cannot even have the clients and the monies you are making. And it reminds me of in the Bible, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. I try to paraphrase, it says, whatever your hand, these hands, eh, these hands, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all might. Why? Because in the grave where you're heading, There'll be no working, there'll be no planning, there'll be no knowledge, whether will there be wisdom. This verse comes relevant to me. Because actually when you look at all those bodies in the mortuary, they are all silent. The lawyer with their many caps of legal law that they have practiced, at that point it's irrelevant. The doctor with all the knowledge, with all the school, the many years they put into with all due respect. Six, seven years into internship, into so many years, it's all silent in that mo moment. As silent as a mortuary, because by the way, there's no noise in mortuary. When you get into that place, you will hear the silence in it because there is no life, okay? Be it an engineer who has been making buildings, skyscrapers, you know, the roads. At this point, they do not, they do not practice anything like that. They are all in silence. Even a baby who screams and cries for breasts, for milk breasts, you know, at that point they are quiet in their silence. All we have to do is baby so-and-so on their name tag. If it's a, a title, even a pastor who knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, in that room called mortuary, it's humbleness. And at that point, they cannot even mitigate. They cannot say, oh, let me go back to the living and be able to make my name. Or, oh, let me go back to the living and be able to bring out my will and be able to say, oh, my wife, I've hidden some money somewhere in a certain account. Go for it. Or my husband, 
please go and there is a small, you know, piece of land that I've hidden somewhere. At that point, when you're in that room called mortuary, you, you don't have a case. And if you were to make a name, you made it, whether good or bad. Remember to watch part one, episode one of this death series. We were discussing such things. I will leave a link here for you to connect so that you can get it. So what I mean is, whatever that you have been hiding, you will not even be able to. Imagine you were a very rich man, maybe a politician, a big wealthy man, past, maybe a king, maybe a queen, maybe someone with all the titles and properties. You had one house in one town in one city, actually stuck property. Sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes even not gained genuinely. Sometimes it's even stolen property. Sometimes you have diminished your family or your country or your constituents. You have been just stuck stashing those amounts of money's properties in even maybe different countries. At that point, they are not even helping you. They'll even maybe be left to people who will misuse and mismanage them. Or maybe the government will recoup it back because anyway, legally, any monies that are not claimed goes back to the central bank of that country. To the, any property, it goes back to the country. Any land that is not claimed, it goes back because land belongs to governments anyway. So what I mean is all this wealth you are trying to hide, at that point, it's not going to help anyone. Let's move forward. You're silent in the mortuary. People are very busy, by the way, your family, planning for your funeral. Some of us, where we come from, it's a big deal. People will be meeting for funeral arrangements. People will be planning or and even discussing, or maybe you will not be buried in a certain part of the land, or maybe not behind the house, not in front of the house. Tell me, what does your culture say, by the way? Let's discuss in the comments. Yes, because cultures are different. Some even maybe will have said, oh, you know what? I just want to be cremated because that's another option people are going for. What I mean is you are not even part of the discussions. People who are living are the ones and very busy even saying, you see the property that is in a certain town that is going to be mine. Your other son is discussing. Your wife is discussing, maybe even in countries. Unfortunately, if you die in test state, having not left a will, maybe even now they scaffold. Maybe even your body will delay to be buried. I've seen some bodies even delaying as much as six months, as much as one year, are waiting for them to come into agreement. The fights, the enmity that will come in that family, war unto you. you. I wish you were given one minute just to open your eyes and see what is happening to your family. All the grace that you had tried to bring into that family, maybe it's gone. So what I'm saying is this life is a journey. Prepare your journey as if you're exiting the next minute. Not even the next day. Anything, people have even gone to bed and not woken up and they were not sick. Some people even have sat on a chair watching a movie and you see here they just got a heart attack and died. So why are we taking life so seriously, frustrating people? We can't love each other. We have to hide each other. You know, siblings, rivalry, husband and wife living like they, they, they are here forever. We are here for a moment. Today we are here Tomorrow we are gone. We are like a flower. And I like this country where I live in, eh? because of the four seasons. They'll come a winter, they'll come spring, they'll come summer, they'll come autumn. And all of these seasons are very different. But imagine seasons come and go. This is how I look at life. It will come and go. Celebrate each other in the moments where you are in. Okay, so we go now again to the funeral. The funeral time is where sometimes some of these secrets come. Some people will come and say, oh, you know Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so. They owe us $10,000 uh, or whatever amount of money and denominations you have in your country. And they'll be discussing how they owe them. And you're there, you're wondering, they never told us. As I said, sometimes even some hidden children... Children that were not even being upfronted into the family. They come. We've seen in scenarios. They come and they are as old as over 20 years. Maybe this man has been educating them secretly or never wanted to own up into the new family. Sometimes even women, by the way, they have been hiding a child back in the family, in uh, maybe out of the country or maybe in a different county or state, according to your country. And when they die, they have to come for their mother or their dad's funeral. And you see them now becoming an issue. What I'm saying is some of these things just destroy your so-called glory. Let's prepare and live knowing death is here walking with us in our clothes. We carry it every day. Going to bed and waking up in the morning alive, it is not our right. It's a favor. You never know. 
you never know. All these titles, be it a doctor, be it a lawyer, engineer, farmer, I don't know, well-established businessman, doctor, nurse, pilot, all these titles are here to benefit us well on earth. But we should not hold on to them as if we'll go them to the grave. Remember, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all might. Why? Because in the grave where you're going, there's not going to be any working, no planning, no knowledge, no wisdom. You will not go with it. You will be able to only use it here on earth. So love people as much as you can. Be kind to people as much as you can. Be open. Live a life today as if there's no tomorrow. Whatever you want to do, if you're at workplace, why are you making everybody be able to feel so uncomfortable as if you're going to be? And by the way, we have seen even organizations that people have held them with a lot of just making everybody feel uncomfortable, feel uneasy. Those companies, sometimes they collapse. You who was uh, even frustrating people, you go out and you find even struggle to even get another job. Well, people that you are looking down upon, they get jobs. To me, I'm a believer of every day to be the best day because that's the only day that you know, actually the only minute that you know. All these titles, remember, we are headed to the mortuary when we die and they will make, death makes us equal by the way, equal. Everybody, you have to be in that frozen moment, cold, you can't turn, you can't talk. You are near a drunkard, you are near an engineer, you are near a doctor, you are near a baby, you are all packed in those frozen moments waiting to be buried. You can't even turn to see who your neighbor is. You can't, they do not even know your degrees, how many you have. Actually, that's why they say in the grave is where we have the richest and the most educated, where at that point the knowledge is not relevant to this world because it can't come out. So you can only be able to use your knowledge. You can only be able to use your love and your skills here on earth. Remember, life a journey is a journey. Life is a journey. Walk here in it. Let's continue loving each other, treating each other well, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends and family and your associate and your inner circles. Continue spreading the word. Like. Turn on all your notifications so that you do not miss Karo Kyoi Moments videos. And comment so that we can be able to understand some people are coming in box. I understand some people that is their way. But if you come into the public comments, we are all going to hear what you're telling us and be able to even know what else would you like us to prepare and talk about because life is a journey. Walk in it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video sometime. Stay around. Bye-bye.